Hey everybody, welcome back to the dining room. Today Katie and I are going to work on tearing the paneling out of here so that we can put up new drywall and then get it painted and finish up this dining room project. This is what the dining room looked like before we got started with this project. If you missed the first video, I'll leave a link so you can go back and check it out. In a nutshell, my father-in-law Matt and I ripped out those cabinets, then we cut out the wall separating the dining room and the hallway on the other side. Then we put in a header for support since this is a load-bearing wall. We did all this while everyone else was out of the house, and my wife was pretty surprised when she got home. To start phase two of this project, we pulled all the face plates off the switches and outlets, took out the baseboard registers, then started ripping the paneling off the walls. The first few strips were just nailed on, and the wall underneath was in pretty good shape, so we had high hopes of being able to just do a little touching up and repaint the existing drywall. Those dreams were crushed pretty quickly when we realized that most of the paneling was put up using nails and an industrial adhesive. This resulted in abstract chunks being torn off the face of the wall and leaving a surface that would have been more trouble than it was worth to patch. So we ripped out all the old drywall too, until all we had left was bare studs. You having any fun yet? Yeah, I am having fun. I know that we took the shades down so that makes a big difference, but even before we did that, the room just looked so much brighter without that paneling. Emmett even came up here and he goes, Mom, it's so bright in here. What do you guys think? Good. Good. You think good? Yeah. That's your, your official statement? Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll put it on the record. We hauled in a bunch of new drywall and proceeded to hang it throughout the dining room. Hanging drywall is pretty easy. I don't claim to be an expert, and a real pro would probably laugh at me, but I've done enough of it in this house over the years that I've picked up a few good tips along the way. Mostly, it's just a matter of taking one space at a time and cutting the full sheet to fit around the obstacles in the way. Sometimes you have to take pretty good measurements and mark out a position so that you can cut out specific shapes like I'm doing for this outlet. It's really helpful to have a second person to help you move sheets around and hold things in place while the first drywall screws get driven in to hold it up. Katie and I got into a pretty good rhythm of tacking up a sheet, then she would drive in all the screws while I moved on to the next piece. Here's one good tip. When working with an outside corner, don't bother trying to cut the sheet to length beforehand. Using the stud behind the corner as a straight edge, you can score a line with a box cutter, then break the drywall at the seam, then cut through the paper on the opposite side. This leaves you with a perfect corner that didn't require any measuring. With all the drywall hung, I moved on to putting corner bead on all the corners. This stuff makes it easier to get a good looking corner, and it makes it a little stronger at the same time. After taking a very rough measurement, I cut it to length, then ever so slightly bent the corners in so they won't poke through the mud later on. Then I just nailed them in place. In my experience, the number of nails depends on how good your corner is. If it lays flat, it doesn't take as many nails. If it's crooked, it takes more to make it lay flat. At this time of the day, Katie and the boys are all taking a nap in the next room, and I really didn't want to wake them up. Have you ever tried to hammer quietly? It's not possible. In this one spot, I had a wide seam and a chunk missing from some overzealous demolition. Using this mesh tape helps fill these bigger voids by adding a little structure to the mud that gets pushed through it. Think of it a little bit like using rebar in concrete. Drywall mud is much easier to work with if you water it down a little first. So starting with a clean bucket, I scooped out some thick mud, added water, then gave it a good mixing. I don't have any good advice on actually applying mud. It is just a forearm burning exercise that challenges my patience and leaves me covered in a quickly hardening cocoon of sadness. There's nothing fun about it for me. It's just a task that has to get done. Then I let it dry overnight and the next step is even worse. So at this point, it's just a lot of sanding. And the only thing on earth that's worse than actually sanding drywall would be to watch somebody sand drywall. So you're welcome. I'm gonna spare you from that. And we're just gonna skip to the next step. So at this point, we've mudded and sanded a couple of different times, but if there's one thing that I know, it's that I'm terrible at finishing drywall. So it's time to bring out our secret weapon. This little guy is gonna help us add texture to the entire room and hide all the little imperfections that we missed. This looks a lot like your standard paint roller, but it's actually made up of a bunch of little wire hoops that'll pick up a whole lot of drywall mud out of the bucket and we'll roll it onto the wall, and then we'll come back through and knock it down with a trowel, and that'll leave the wall with a nice textured effect that's gonna hide all the things that I didn't get to. We've used this method in a bunch of different places over the years. 
We used it on the ceiling and walls in this room to have a consistent look. The only drawback is the amount of extra mud you need to cover every square foot, and the only skill involved is dragging the smoothing blade at a consistent pressure so that everything looks uniform. When it comes to painting, I don't have the skill or patience to do the detail work, but Katie excels at it. So while she cuts into all the tight corners and places that transition from one color to another, I just slot paint onto the biggest surfaces with a roller. We decided not to remove the paneling in the stairway, and instead we just painted over it. We use this big sheet of plywood between the two window frames as a makeshift scaffolding in order to reach the highest parts. I'm finally getting some color on the paneling. It took two coats of primer to cover up the paneling. Um, so I'm finally getting some color on here. And are we gonna need two coats of actual paint? Do you think? I don't know if we'll need two coats on the paneling because I did a good job with the primer, but we will need two coats on the walls. Okay. Just because of the texture. So we did end up putting a second coat of paint on everything and it turned out really nice. I think this is where I'm going to call it quits for this part of the project. There's a lot more to go, but this feels like a good stopping point because we've moved back in. We're using the dining room as a dining room again. Uh, now you probably noticed a couple of things, like we didn't cover up the carpet and just let everything rain down on top of it, and that's because we were planning on ripping out the carpet in the first place. There's hardwood floors underneath it, so we're going to get it refinished, we're going to patch a few holes from where the wall used to be in here, and get the floors nice and new and matching the rest of the upstairs. I've also got to put new light fixtures in here and in the stairway. In here we might do a ceiling fan, I'm not sure yet. And then we're going to refinish the handrail for the stairway. Uh, it's a nice piece of hardwood. It's just been beat up over the last 50 years of use. So I'm going to refinish it and put that in all nice and new like. And then the window behind me is going to need to get painted white and have trim put around it. And the same thing with the uh, big openings between the stairway and the dining room in here. We've got to trim that in too. So that'll be another project down the road. And really that's about it. So. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.